Software development is hard. Software is slippery, complex stuff. It's all too easy to get into trouble in software really fast. Good design can provide some insulation against catastrophe, or at least help us to maintain our code bases as a habitable space. So what are the common problems in the design of code? What are the mistakes that we see all of the time? Here are a few bad examples and what to do about them. So how does code go wrong and how do you fix it? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content, hit like as well. In this episode, let's take a look at some code, some bad code, and then let's talk about how to do better. I want to explore five ways to improve your code, and so the design of your code. Before we begin, the best way that I know to get good, fast feedback on the quality of your design is to practice test-driven development. Uh, this video is not about test-driven development, but do check out some of my other videos that are. If we want to improve our code, then one piece of advice that I often hear that I kind of disagree with is comment your code. It's not really that I hate comments, but to be honest, I rarely see them used very well. Here is a bad example. It's kind of funny, it's so bad. Um, this code has something of an excuse. It's intended to teach assembler programming to beginners. But many years ago, I used to work with somebody who used to comment their assembler exactly like this. If you know any assembler at all, and maybe even if you don't, it's fairly obvious that the comment on the right-hand side simply repeats the code on the left in a more verbose way. It adds nothing at all to describe what was going through the programmer's mind as they wrote this code. Maybe the programmer's practicing their typing, but I can't see much other advantage in it than that. Okay, so this is a bit of a joke, but here's another example. And although I've made this up to protect the guilty, I often see code that looks like this in real code bases. So here we have a function and it's called function. And it takes three parameters, S, V and P. So that's all right then. Everybody clear what this function's doing? No? Well, I suppose we could improve this code with a few comments. How about this? This is probably a little bit better, certainly. Now, at least, we have some chance of understanding what the code is going is trying to do and what's going on here. But how often have you seen comments like this in a code base that bear no real relationship to what the code actually does? Why not write the code so that it, rather than the comments, tells us what it does? This is much more obvious. This example is easier to read than even the commented version was. And if I decide to change the intent of this function, because the words are, are right here in front of me, I am much less likely to leave them behind as I would with comments um, and leave them telling lies. Use comments to explain why you made a choice, not what the code does. The code should always clearly explain what it does. And if it doesn't, fix it so that it's clearer. Refactor the code to eliminate or at least minimize the need for comments. Write code that expresses ideas, not code that only compiles, even if it does work. If you'd like to learn more about my approach to software development in general, take a look at my training courses. There's a link in the description below. Next in my list of common bear traps in code are long methods. Long methods are hard to read. They're even harder to understand, and they're also much harder to troubleshoot if something goes wrong. So they add a lot to the time that you spend maintaining code. Always prefer short methods and functions to long ones. If somebody tells you that extra function calls will slow the code down, then they probably don't know what they're talking about, or they should use a better compiler. Refactor long functions into smaller methods. 
The code that has been scrolling past on the screen here is 623 lines long. 623 lines in one function. The most common response that I get when I've shown this code to programmers is, oh, we have much longer functions than that. A perverse kind of win, I suppose. By preference, I usually add a check to my continuous integration system that fails the build if a function is longer than around about 20 lines of code. Then, if I get lazy, CI reminds me to do a better job. The answer to long methods is refactoring. I have a short series of videos demonstrating some refactoring techniques in some fairly nasty code that you may find helpful. So take a look at those if that's interesting to you. But here are a few thoughts on refactoring. The most valuable technique, I think, the one that I use most anyway, is extract method. In this, we select a block of code and give it a name by extracting it as a new method. And now our code starts to describe a little bit more about what it is that it's trying to achieve. This is probably the most useful tool in the refactoring tool chest, in my view. It allows us to simplify the code in front of us by giving it, hopefully, a descriptive name. After that comes the work to reduce the cyclomatic complexity of our code. Extract conditional and loop blocks as methods. This allows us to further semantically declutter the code in front of us. We can work iteratively on making the code simpler and simpler in tiny little steps. Move related concepts closer together in the code, particularly in long method. Identify related ideas in a large method and move them physically closer together and then extract that block as a, as a, as a method. As you are applying these techniques, keep a good lookout for chances to reuse the new bits of code that you are identifying and naming. When extracting methods, you'll quickly often find opportunities for reuse. Take them, clean up the code as you go. The secret to refactoring is to work in small, safe steps. Small steps allow us to make changes with confidence. Divide refactoring into a series of small steps rather than fewer big ones. Separation of concerns is an idea that deeply informs my own approach to design. Separation of concerns is about teasing apart the responsibilities of the piece of code that we work on. Colloquially, this is often referred to as one class, one thing, one method, one thing, one function, one thing. Our goal is to ensure that the code that we're working on is aimed at achieving one goal and only one goal. It makes the test more, it makes the code more testable and more effective at doing that one thing well. And that in, in general tends to have good knock on effects in terms of the quality of our designs. Finally, buy Martin Fowler's refactoring book. Learn those skills. Take them seriously. Next in my list of common design mistakes. Long parameter lists. Long parameter lists indicate high coupling and poor separation of concerns in our code base. This function in the example has 22 parameters. Yuck! Can you imagine using, having to face using that in your code? I usually fail the build at about six parameters in my CI checks. But if I'm honest, I'm usually starting to feel a bit queasy about the quality of my design if I go over four. Limit the number of parameters you need in any method or function. Fail the build if you exceed it. Refactor to improve the separation of concerns in your design, to improve that modularity uh, and cohesion uh, in the code that you're working on. Maybe you're missing a concept of some kind, and maybe use an object or a type to combine parameters into more, a more coherent whole. But fix the design. Next. Duplicated code. My advice is that within a module, service, or bounded context, apply dry. Don't repeat yourself. Be strict with yourself. Adopt a very low tolerance for repetition. I tend to feel a little bit uneasy in my design if I have two or three lines that repeat themselves within the same context. Duplicated code is a maintenance overhead. In this single function, the long one from before, this block of code is repeated 13 times. Stamp out duplication wherever possible. Look out for subtle cases of near duplication. 
Landers' functions as arguments are sometimes a big help in the need to cope with these small differences and, and give us more power to be able to reduce um, uh, the duplication in, in our code. Once again, extract method is your friend here. Refactor. Complex conditionals is the next smell on my list. Large conditional logic blocks are common and bad. This function, yes, it's the same horrible code once again, has 361 lines inside a single if statement. The, the if statement is, is this, it's if unlikely bang ci, 361 lines of crap and then stuff outside of the conditional block. After spending way too much time reading through this code, I think that what they really meant to say was this. If there's no connection in CI, create a connection. When I looked around the code, that create connection method, as it turned out, was that 321 lines of rather unpleasant code. Uh, but that was also duplicated slightly differently in three other places in the code that I saw. Consider patterns such as decorator, strategy, or state to help you move these conditionals out. Reduce the complexity of the conditionals. Significantly, nested conditionals is probably the best way to make your code hard to read. So don't do them. Adopt the discipline of allowing yourself one conditional per function or method. If you are really good, you're allowed to have an else clause as well. A good step in refactoring is often to simply extract a method, as I did here, to pull out the body of the conditional um, and name it. Our job as programmers is to solve problems, not to write code. To do that well, we need to retain our ability to solve new problems. Working so that our code is a nice place to work is part of the discipline that it takes to be a good programmer. Refactoring skills are the most important tool that you need to keep sharp. Refactoring should be a pervasive part of how you organise your work. I often describe test-driven development as red-green refactor. If you don't practice test-driven de development, well, you should. But even so, after every small change, many times per day, refactor your code. Look to see if you can tidy your work and the code in the area of your work. Think of yourself as a chef, keeping your work area clean and sanitary as you go. It's a nicer place for you to work and a much nicer place for the people that come after you to work too. Those are my five things. Those are my five common smells in code and design. If you've got any more or any other suggestions or any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.